Okay, so we travel to Brickwood Lane Saturday to take on a Hadley side who are themselves in a good run of form. What are you expecting from your opposition, given that they are pulling themselves away from the bottom two, game by game? I mean, they've had a couple of really good results and um, all throughout the season they've been liable to, to go to places and, and, and pull off a result. So um, probably consistency has probably been missing in, the, in their game a little bit. Um, but nonetheless, they're, they're a well-run club. I've got a lot of respect for, for Steve Bray down there. Um, I think he's a really good guy. And their manager as well. I think they, they do an honest job down there. So they're, they're a good club. So we've got to treat them with a lot of respect. Um, they're on an okay run of form as well. Um, so something's got to give. Um, we've got eight games to go from our point of view, and we want to obviously get maximum points on the board um, as we can. And when you look at the league table, it's um, it's it's mental really. To be honest with you, it's so so tight, and it's now the final furlong and someone can put a run together there then anything's for the taking here you know even the top spot you know the top spot three or four weeks ago i thought was bedford's to to wrap up in in, in good time but you know they've had some some freak results you know and um, afc dunsbo have gone there and beat them on on a tuesday night uh three nil and now afc dunsbo find themselves in fourth big uh, big was way town now top so it's yeah it's a really sort of weird season to be honest with you but Again, looking inwards, we can only just look what we can do and um, try and get as many get many points on the board as possible and see where that brings us come April the 27th. So you mentioned how open the league is. Obviously, we've had Lee as well. They drew Tuesday against Kings Langley. Obviously, prior to that, they got back-to-back -back wins against Northley and Bedford. And obviously, with the Northley game, that was a 6-0 win within that one. It just proves how open this league actually is. I mean, how optimistic are you for that playoff push? Well, as obviously as anyone can be in terms of we've got to go and take care of our business which is winning games and none more so on Saturday so we like I reiterate we've got eight games and uh, you know this time last year we played um, Berkhamsted uh, this exactly this this weekend uh, it was a non-league day and they were coming here to get a point to win the league and um, and we stifled them and, and we we just previously beaten Welling Garden City prior to that and we went on a really good run I think seven wins in nine you know we, we need something very similar this season, I think, to, to get ourselves in the other side of it and to get into the playoffs, um, which is nice to be able to talk to you about that, but also a tinge of frustration as well, because we went five games with, with a winning streak, and then we've now gone um, three games without a win. So we're a little bit famine or feast, and we've just got to get a little bit more consistency to our game. It, we're very much capable of it. You know, as we've seen, we've beaten the top team in this league, and we've, we've, we've got a point off us. We've taken four points off the top team. Um, it's such a topsy turvy league, you know. There's, there's, there's going to be so many more sort of little stories as well coming in and out, you know. And no doubt managers might change and teams might not get ground grading and things like that sort of thing. So there's so many more permutations that only non league can throw up this time of year. Um, so obviously, we'll move on from the playoff talk. Next Tuesday, we have a break from league action. Obviously, it will be host St Albans in the County Club semi final. How big of a game is this for a club the size of Hartford? Yeah, it's, it's huge to be honest with you. There's not many, realistically, for a club the size of Hartford, um, what are we going to go and potentially try and win? You know, there's not going to be many, to be honest with you. Obviously, yes to the league, but take that aside, cup competitions, we want to get as far as we can in the FA Cup. Didn't do very well this year. FA Trophy, did okay, but should have done better. Um, so to get to the, the last sort of stages of any competition is, is, is huge. and. I don't think it could be underestimated that winning games of football and winning trophies is what the game's about and that, that habit, you know, I see it with the younger lads, you know, we um, in the academy won the league yesterday and last year obviously we had some really good success and that's really important, I think that's lost on people these days, you know, it's all about development, development, but you've got to go and win and winning is a formula and you've got to understand how you go and win and then you can replicate that and that's growing from experience of doing it. So. Actually, winning is a really big habit. So on Tuesday, look, full respect to St Albans, obviously. They've beaten Stevenage the other night. Um, they've doing really well in the league since they changed their manager. They've, they've done really, really well. Um, so they're going to have one eye on that as well. So look, it's going to be a good game. It's going to be a good test for us. We've got to remember they're a step two team. Whatever team they put out, they're going to be a step two team. So it'll be a really tough game for us. Um, but with the incentive of going through to a final, and for that to look forward to is, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's what the players play for. And that's, what, that's why I'm here as well. We want to win things. Well, you mentioned about the successes of the club, obviously with the under-19s academy team winning their league yesterday. The under-14s women's team are playing in the County Cup final on Saturday. That along with yourself trying to set up the girls' academy. How important and how bright is the future looking, especially in the women's game, but also as a club, how bright is it looking? 
Yeah, yeah, it's really difficult. I'm one of them people that, that um, looks back momentarily and then you want to plow on forward because in this game, when you, when you pat yourself on the back for too long, then the game passes you by and it bites you right where it hurts. So um, it's always, for me, it's always got to be mitigated with the fact that, um, yes, celebrate the really good occasions and, you know, and we should laud the under-14 girls getting to a cup final and obviously the boys yesterday winning their league and et cetera, et cetera. But... There's always the next thing to go and do, you know. So with the boys, it'll be like we've got a champions of champions to look forward to now. Can we go and be the best in the country at that? You know, I'm sure the girls will want to go and be the best that they can be and go and win that as well. So it's all about winning, um, and it's all about how we do that as a club. But but when you look back and you look back five years since I came in um, in May 2019, uh, the club's changed immeasurably since then, uh, and for the better. And to see. This place full, um, pretty much Monday to Sunday, um, all, all day, every day. Um, it's really, really good and tapping into more and more local community as well. Obviously, we've got the girls here, we've got the disability guys here as well. Um, it, it really is, you know, you've got all the boys and girls of younger age groups as well. You know, the first sort of steps in football all the way through to first teams. What we're trying to do is have that, obviously, that pathway all the, all the way through from when you come in as a grassroots player. Hopefully that you can go into the first team, um, you know, if you're good enough, that is. Um, but the opportunity is there. And as a club, we've, we've got so much more to do. Um, but nonetheless, we've, we've come a long way in that, in that time as well. So you mentioned about coming through grassroots, starting from the bottom and working your way all the way through. One player to mention that we've not really hugely spoken about is Archie. So Archie came in with the club at under six and he's probably one of the only players that I'm aware of that has come from under six right the way through to make his debut for the senior side. How does he, as a manager, and obviously, how does that make you feel? Yeah, that? extremely proud. Yeah, Archie's a really good lad. He's done really well. He's 16. Um, he's played for our under-16s last year as well, and he's done tremendously well. And he's gone on loan to Bulldog Town at step five, and I think they've done a really good job with him. Um, you know, I think Dave there is a, is a really good guy. Um, seldom do you meet people that are really honest and, and upfront, and he's definitely one of those. And he's looked after um, Archie, as, as have others as well. Um, and to, for him to get a debut and to, to start progressing here at step four as a 16 year old, I think is, is really is a testament to him. You know, he deserves it. It's all very well, and you know, you'll see clubs, you'll see clubs at different levels that will, will put in players to promote um, their academy. And, and, you know, it's a little bit lip service to it sometimes with some clubs, you know. But I would genuinely say here, you've seen this year with Archie, with, with others as well, Kirai, Billy, Sonny, Will and Goal. You know, Sonny's probably played 30 or games, as has Billy, so is, so is Kirai, and they've been brilliant for us, you know. Um, we've mentioned Archie as well, he's gone on to play probably 30 or games at step five, so as a 16 year old to go and do that, it's, it's incredible. And uh, to get the gold return that he's given as well at that level from a, from a team that's not at the top of the table is also a testament to him as well. So he's now got to learn a little bit more here as well, obviously, no pressure on him. You don't want to burden these players and put too much expectation on them as well because they're, they're young players and they're, they're going to be a little bit hit and miss at times you know they're going to make mistakes and um, over the period of time they'll get better and better and better so I think it's brilliant for the club to have that pathway all the way through and if, if Archie's the first that's come from under six all the way through to the first team then that's fantastic and long may it continue and hopefully there's there's many more to come off the block like him. That's perfect well cheers for your time Ben and good luck for the week. Thank you.